you know, I want you to think about this. You come up for renewal, you're already living paycheck to paycheck, and now you have to renegotiate your mortgage. Based on a house that the value has decreased. Granted, but now I'm going to throw this out there. OSPI is still doing the stress test at a higher interest rate. So contract rate being 4.6. On top of that, you have to qualify 200 basis points on top of that. So where does that leave the average person coming up for renewal? Do they qualify, Jamie, with this unsecured debt as well? It's going to be very hard. Very hard. Hit it. That's what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay, now. From the beginning. Hit it, boy. All right. This is Real Talk with Carmen Costa. Um, today is interesting. We just had a market update uh, from a regional risk manager with Sagan. So uh, I've got data, and you're like, don't read the sheet. Don't read the sheet. But yeah, yeah, we're not. Uh, I just I have it for data reasons, like for numbers, uh, just so I can, you know. Yeah, we just don't want to get those it. numbers wrong. That's yeah, yeah. Problem. Imagine yeah. that. Then uh, how many like commentary are we gonna get on that? So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to start off, um, I know we were saying we were going to do a motivational piece and a, you know, a mortgage update. Um, it's a motivational mortgage. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what's the, what's the new things Irvine was saying? Uh, mindful, no, not mindful. Mindful mortgage? No, it's a holistic approach. The holistic approach on mortgages. The holistic approach on mortgages. You guys heard mortgages. it here first. Or I know. Or not. But. I know. No. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, he just thinks it's funny. He's like, when did we, when did we start mixing that with mortgages? Right. So. Anyways, I wanted to go through, um, there's been a lot of questions. Um, you know, people have been emailing, they've been calling. Uh, so the Bank of Canada announced it was January 25th. Yeah. Prime rate had gone up a quarter percent, mm -hmm. right? Or not prime rate, Bank of Canada rate had gone up a quarter percent, which essentially prime rate goes up a quarter percent. I wanted to make mention because a lot of people kept asking, they're like, do you think rates are going to continue to go up? Do you think, you know, so as of today, I did have, I did have prime rate where prime rate is as of today, 2023, it's 6.7%. So, and, you know, and, and there's and more announcements to come. You, you, this is February uh, 3rd. Today, February so. 3rd. So 6.7% yeah. is where prime rate is today, yes. right? And then what um, some of the professionals, so uh, the risk manager that had come on to talk to my team had said that, um, I guess uh, they're saying that they may not do any more raises, right? So this would be probably your final raise. So. I just, I, I want to say something that he said, because I always think this and I want to make something clear here. Everything I state here is opinion, right? So it's my opinion based on information that I read, that I do research on, but I was always self-conscious and you keep telling me, Carmen, do updates on mortgages, do updates on this. People want to hear it. And when I'm one-on-one -on -one with somebody, I'm great. Mm -hmm. You, we've done one-on-one -on -one together. Mm -hmm. I am great. But I get very self-conscious and then you start writing stuff down and you're like, you gotta, you can't memorize all these numbers that are coming through. Yeah, it's through. difficult to memorize. And, it's and very when, difficult. And when I asked you to make notes, it's really for that. It's so that you don't, you know, if there's a certain number you wanna sure. make sure you get right. You're referencing, you you're literally exactly. referencing. So, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. So somebody called me and they're like, do you think this is the last time that they're gonna raise rates? I, I do not. I do not believe it's the last time. That's solely my opinion. Right. So we've got uh, five more announcements for the year. I think it's five more announcements. I kind of highly doubt that they're not going to make any more raises. Right. So but that's just solely my opinion. What's happening in the market today, um, I've said we're going to start referencing some of the video that I've done. And I'm like, okay. don't post that video, Jamie. And it's got timestamps on it. Yeah, what yeah. have I been saying, Jamie? I brought you on for a reason, because what have I been saying, even when the market with the rates were so low and everybody was buying, what was I telling you? Rates are going to go up. They're going to go up. and Values just, are going to come down. You got to be patient. You got <laughs> to right? be patient. Right. And thing. you want, you wanted to buy. And I said, don't buy Jamie. Don't, don't buy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a lot of the agents that come to me and they're like, well, how did you know, Carm? Because a lot of the agents on the team didn't buy. They wanted to buy. They came, when they asked my opinion, I was like, no, not the time to buy. Yeah. So. I just wanted to go through stats and numbers okay. because I think it's key and important for people to understand what is happening today. So what is the normal thing to do when you're trying to figure out or trying to, you know, understand the market? You pretty much go back in history to check what has happened. So you look at charts, you start to check out and see the last recession, where were the numbers at? 
And where are the numbers today? Are there any correlation between the two, right? So I've got a couple of, you know, just, I'm, I'm not going to inundate with a lot. If you want to have a conversation offline, I can give you a lot more consumer index, whatever you want to know. But I, I pinpointed important things for people to know. Okay. So in 2008, everybody knows we were in a recession. They say that there's been a couple of recessions, apparently, because there's always, you never want to say, hey, man, we're in a full-blown recession because that causes panic, and yeah. then it causes panic buy, then it causes prices to go up. So essentially what's happening, it's called panic buy, right? So it's just it's just the way the market works. And governments don't like to say they're in a... No. Yeah, because then no. they're going to be seen as the ones that went through yeah. a recession. So, so. Yeah, well, I have something to talk about, you know, OSPI and... I have a lot to talk about oh that. Boy, so it's going to be fun today. Oh, it's going to be a very fun. So this is going to be a very fun <laughs> podcast today. So back in 2008, prime rate sat at 5.75. Okay. Today, prime rate is 6.7%. Okay. So that was in 2008. Um, does anybody know where inflation sits today? Do you know where inflation sits? It's uh, it's pretty high. Yeah. So inflation is 6.5% as of today. Okay. In 2008, it was 3.84. Hmm. The normal recession, which what is this, what is acceptable, is 2% and below. Okay? Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're well above that in history. We're actually well above that at 6.5%. You know, I get the question all the time, Karma, are we in a recession? I fully believe we've been in a recession for quite some time, right? And people were just trying to deny it. So people go, well, the market was doing so well, like like 20, 2019, 2020, values were, okay, so values are driven up by supply and demand. Mm -hmm. When there's not enough supply and rates are super cheap and you're being pushed by the media, that rates are so cheap, go buy. What do you do? You go and buy. Mm -hmm. Not thinking about the product you're buying may be driven up by that, right? So here's my concern. You know, we're, so people ask, so Karma, are we in a recession? So I do believe we are in a recession, but we can be positive about this. We don't have to panic buy. We don't have to get all crazy. We don't have to, to cause friends like craziness over this. Um, the one thing I, I do want to make mention, because you, you said it, you're like, the government doesn't want, you know, us to panic about this. So OSPI is, um, you know, they regulate um, by financial institutions, right? Okay. So they pretty much control, um, you know, and, and put in these rules. So uh, they essentially um, did the stress test. So the stress test is contract rate plus 200 points, right? So it was a great theory, it was a great theory trying to control because in 2008, I'm going to reference my paper. So in 2008, um, you know, the Great Recession, you know, in the U.S. Uh, was driven by fake documentations, all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, everybody remembers that. So yep. just go reference 2008. This is all at your fingertips. Google is yeah. your best friend. <laughs> Google is, uh, is you know, so it's, it's offering, you know, mortgages to unqualified buyers, right? Yeah. So essentially it was done by fake documentations, right? So everybody was just getting a mortgage for free. We were Oprah. Yep. Boo, 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 you get a mortgage. Ooh. So now let's look at today's date. Um, and I'm not like making any comparisons. I'm not, you know... Um, not knocking anybody down, but you look at you look at what's happening today. So we've talked about it. It's on our podcast. I always said until it all happens, Jamie, don't post the videos. Don't post the videos, right? Yeah. But if you look at now, and we've talked about this, in 2019, 2018, we were handing out mortgages below 2%, right? Because they were fixed rates um, and, you know, values were driven up. We're handing all these mortgages out and... I want you to think about this, right? Were we even looking to see if rates had gone above those 200 points? So let's say we handed out a mortgage because the lowest mortgage I handed out was about 135. So that brings me to, you know, 135, 200 points up to qualify them. That's 335. The current mortgage rate today, if you come up for renewal, is well above 4%. Okay, that's going to be a big difference right there. Yeah. So I, I just, I want to throw this out there because, you know, you know, I'm doing comparisons, Jamie. I'm yep. just doing, I don't want you to think, you know, so, you know, fake documentations, all this stuff in the U.S. for the grant, like the Great Recession, all that stuff was happening. 
you know, and you talk about the government doing whatever possible to not instill fear and all that. And they, they've done the stress test. They've, you know, but I think if they actually sat with the professionals that are in this industry, you know, just to see, you know, what they can do, there's a lot of things on the table right now, you know, and some of the things that they were considering, like taxing your primary residence for capital gains. Like these were things that are on the table that I don't think consumers knew was going on. So if you had, you know, if you had sold your house and you made 400,000 on your primary residence, they wanted to, you know, tax you on that. Yeah. That was on the table at one point. Like go back and reference that. Like these are things that we need to be on because how many people actually use their home as a retirement vehicle? A lot, a lot of people do. So imagine being taxed on your primary residence. And there's a lot of things being put in place today to try to assist what's to come, right? Meaning, you know, all these people are coming up for renewal towards the end of this year to 2024 to 2025. Yeah. I'm going to throw out a little bit more data. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. It's a data-driven episode today. (laughs) Unsecured debt. Do you know how many Canadians are in like that have an average of 30,000 up to 30,000 each individual in unsecured debt. Do you want me to guess the yeah. percentage here? Yeah, yeah, I'm just interested. And it, and if you want to comment below that. 30,000? Would... I'm going to say it's going to be pretty high. Probably, I don't know, is 60% too much? 100%. So it's 60% of Canadians. Are you serious? Yes. 60% of Canadians. <laughs> I got it right. It's like a very so we are in the most debted country because the Like a lot of Canadians carry that, 60% of Canadians. Oh, wow. That's what I'm saying to you. So I want you to stop and think about this. So I'm just, I'm throwing this all out there. I'm just giving data. So this isn't, you can go look this data up. It's available to you at your fingertips, right? So um, all these people are coming up for renewal. And now the prices of homes, the values that you purchased it for, more data, data came out. It's showing that in in certain markets, it's dropped 30% in value. Yeah. So, you know, I want you to think about this. You come up for renewal, you're already living paycheck to paycheck, and now you have to renegotiate your mortgage. Uh, based on a house that the value has decreased. Granted. But now I'm going to throw this out there. OSPI is still doing the stress test. At a higher interest rate. So contract rate being 4.6. On top of that, you have to qualify 200 basis points on top of that. So where does that leave the average person coming up for renewal? Do they qualify, Jamie, with this unsecured debt as well? It's going to be very hard. Very hard, right? Very hard. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I retain this data, but I get, like, I'm intimidated. But it's true. Like, listening to the professional yesterday, the regional risk manager, I'm like, wow, he's saying everything I've always studied and looked at. And because people are like, where do you get your information? How can you say foreclosures are coming? And I'm like, it's basic math. It's looking at people's situations and understanding what happened in 2008. It's essentially happening today. The numbers don't lie. Look at the numbers, right? If you try to do a comparison and normally, what is the saying about history? History repeats itself, itself, right? So my thing is, I always say, like I tell my team, yes, you know, we are in a recession, but we are positive, right? Our job is to assist people, try to get them in a better financial situation. Yeah, and find solutions. But it's funny you brought this topic up because this morning I was listening to the radio and the announcer was actually talking about this exact topic in which her mortgage is coming up for renewal next year. And it's what you're saying. She's just doing simple math. And she's figured out that, I think she said she was paying 1.95, something like that, which is amazing. That's the normal way, yeah. So she's coming up for renewal next year, and she's already doing this simple calculations. And she was saying, I'm not going to be able to be paid. All all I'm paying is interest. That's it. That's all I'm going to be doing. Right. If I can even qualify. And this... And I think more people like her are realizing this as, you know, an issue that they're going to be facing in the the next year, two or three. Just exactly what you're saying. Honestly, it is. And I think, you know, I hate being the bearer of bad news, but it's like I look at this. It's not bad news. It's realistic, right? No, I understand, Jamie. But here's the thing. We talk about, like I was talking to this, you know, good friend of mine. And he said, he's like, why aren't you giving that information? Like I sat with him for a couple of hours and he's like, oh my gosh, this information's amazing. Like, why aren't you doing this? And I'm like, 
Jamie says this all the time, but it's yeah. intimidation because you don't want to be like, you don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but here's something, you know, that's interesting. Cause I'm constantly reading. I'm, and I'm very open with the team. You know, my agents, they get first live, live information. When I get this information, it goes in front of them. I try to equip them because here's the thing that I want to make clear when, you know, you hear the media and nothing against the media, the media is now all showcase. It's all yeah. like fear base. I want to scare these people, blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. I tell my agents, when we put these regional manager, like regional risk managers in front of you, it's to equip you to be the professional in front of the client, giving them the right information. The problem is, you know, they hear all these things. Like I'm telling you right now, I have a client in a fixed term. She called me panicking. She's like, oh my God, I just saw in the news that the rates went up and I'm like, no, Bank of Canada announced that they raised the rates. So yeah, prime rate goes up a quarter percent, right? I let her know that, right? But she's like, oh, really? Oh no, that they said all rates were going. I'm like, so you have to be aware. Talk to a professional who knows what they're talking about, who understands the markets, right? I would be really wary if I went to like a professional to sit down with them, to talk to them about, and I'd be like, so what are your thoughts on the fixed rates and the variable? My first opinion, like when I get this question asked all the time, Jamie, mm -hmm. what do I say all the time? It's based on your situation. Yeah. Your financial situation is completely different than my financial situation. Why am I giving the same info right across the board? And people do this. Well, what would you suggest I go into? Do I go into a fixed rate? Do I go into a two-year term? Do I go into a three? I don't know. Can I get your information? And can I look at your financial picture? And can I let you know what I think is the best solution for you? Yeah. Right? Wouldn't that be a lot better than saying, you know what? You should just go on a two-year fixed or a three-year fixed. <laughs> no. Because now the professionals... Nothing against the professionals out there. I don't want any like backlash on this. But a lot of these mortgage brokers and, and agents are like, well, let's do the two and the three year. Uh, let's get through this recession or get through this little hump. This Okay, this market correction, for God's sakes, if I hear one more market correction, I'm going to have a heart attack. We're in a full-blown recession. I'm yeah. telling you right now, we're in a recession. Look at the numbers. Look at the history. Figure it out. Yeah, It's similar. We're actually in a, if you look at it, look at the numbers. We're in a higher like, like, look at those numbers, 5.75 in 2008, 2023, today, 6.7. Yeah. Inflation. You're talking about inflation, 3.84, today, 6.5. Come on. So, like, if, if I hear... Numbers don't lie, right? No, they don't. But I see now, I'm watching these podcasts with mortgage brokers now, who six months ago, they were like, a market correction. And now they're like, well, you know, it could be, you know, because what the experts are changing their mind. The experts are like, oh, wait, maybe we are in a recession. But let's not, like you said, we're not going to panic button it because that's what happens. As soon as it's panic button, what ends up happening? You start to go out and panic buy. If we're in a recession, I'm going to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff, supplies and this and that, blah, 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 before the price get driven up. And we're the ones doing it. We're all going out. We're buying yeah. all this stuff. We're panic buying. And then shortages happen. Then your prices are going up because supply and demand, right? And that's what happened exactly in the mortgage industry with properties. The same thing. Rates went down. Nobody was thinking about, oh, when we get out of this, you know, what happens to the price? Like how does prices, I want you to know, like, honestly, Jamie, just think about this. Values alone yeah. go down 30%. In well, some markets. Well, in, in that sense, it is correcting itself because it just, it, I think people got confused with the prices of homes um, everywhere. They went up so much because of what you're saying. Demand was there. People, for some, there was a lot of reasons, I guess, that, that got all together, pandemic included, and people, I think they had too much time at home and they were thinking about... They, they didn't spend for, so the you are right, yeah. because the first year of the pandemic, nobody was spending, everybody was so home. They had this ex extra cash. They're seeing all these friends of theirs making all these investments and buying and going. And, and you know, it's all about following the leader and, uh, oh, you know what, we can probably get this and we'll buy the house and a home that was was uh, supposed to be 800,000 is now 1.2 and you still went to buy it because oh my god everybody's trying to get it like there's human beings are crazy when it comes to that we all feel that need to if he's got it I need it I want to get it I don't care if I'm paying you know and and I think this is exactly what happened and what I think now we're going to be looking at is the the reality is going to hit him in the face but that being said when when we speak about this, you always say, talk to a financial advisor, talk to your mortgage agent or broker, 
way before you need to actually 100%. do so something. So that's my advice now. Um, I'm saying to everybody who's coming up within the year or a year and a half, talk to your expert, right? Talk to them right away. I always worry um, when somebody comes to me a week before and they're like, hey, my mortgage is coming up for a renewal. I'm like, okay, you got to give me some time. I, I've got to <laughs> really look at this, right? But, you know, I just, I honestly, you know, we're here to help. My agents are well prepared. They're, I've always said they're in a training camp. They're constantly learning. They're evolving. Um, you know, we're, we work as a team to try to put these deals together uh, and make it work. It's just a tough situation. You know, I, I don't, it's one thing that I can't stand talking about, um, but numbers don't lie, right? When you're looking yeah. at it and you're listening to the experts, uh, people that actually know what they're talking about. Um, I have to say like with, uh, with this regional manager, like who came out risk manager for Sagan, it was just awesome information. It was so refreshing to finally hear that everything that I've thought about every, I'm like, oh, and then my team was like, you're right. You were right. You know? And I'm like, it, I don't want to be right. I don't, but I'm a hundred percent certain that when I'm looking at numbers, I'm like, you know, and going through the charts and, you know, I, I always say, um, the index chart, I reference that all the time for prime rate. Mm -hmm. I like to look where prime rate is headed from, you know, 70 years back to today. Um, and I like to see what happens. The thing is, is we don't know, like we're seeing, the one-offs, like I have more on my desk now that I'm fighting for, um, for qualifying, you know, coming back to qualifying, it's going to be super hard to qualify these people, uh, and not even values. You're saying values, but you know, OSFI, like I said to you, they're not budging on the stress test. Like follow this in the news. Like they're not budgeting. You know, our profession is lobbying, uh, against them to say, Hey, we need to do something before it gets really bad, right? Before we get towards the end of 2023 to 2024, we need to do something about this stress test. But I want you to imagine Jamie, mm -hmm. some contracts like B lenders and a lenders, they're 6% plus 2%, 8%. You're qualifying people at 8% in a market when rates are so low. Yes. Stress tests are great with a grain of salt. Like I didn't think it was that great because now look, but now think about it. We need to qualify them at a way higher rate and it's not happening. And yeah. on top of that, something that was thrown out and I know this is just news, like just something that I heard and read about, um, you know, they're trying to think about, you know, they're even trying to consider maybe stress testing renewals, people coming up for renewals at banks. So I'm like, do people read this? Like, that's scary. Like imagine now I can tell people just renew at your bank. That's a better idea. You don't even need to qualify. Now they're considering like stress testing those people coming up for renewal right at the bank. I and think about that. That's going to be, that's going to be a much bigger issue if they, they do. They do well, that. I don't know. It's on the table. So this is what I'm telling you. Like, and something I was talking about that you brought up as well. And I, I was like, I'm going to make a note to talk about this is this generation like, and it's no offense to this generation. They follow media, like mm -hmm. social platforms. If social media is saying it, it's happening. Do you know, am I yeah. wrong? Like you're in this. Check. Don't tell me I'm wrong. And I'm no, getting absolutely. your professional opinion on this. <laughs> Let's be realistic. I'm like, I see things my, my kids will bring to me and I'm like, that's not true. Yeah. Right. And I'll fact, like, is it fact check? Yeah. You gotta, yeah. I fact gotta check. check. Check and everything. I show my kids and they're like, oh, they lie. Yeah. And but try to people go to believe it. Too, yeah. Right? But people believe it, Jamie. Like yeah. you oh, don't yeah, see that sure. with social media. A hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's, and it's not only, it's in everything. It's not only mortgages, it's everything. You, you gotta be very careful as to what you hear and what the truth is. There's, it's very different because, you know, people just like to talk. People want to grab that that topic that sounds exciting and that everybody's talking about, but then they don't have the information. And then, you know, once they say it, they say it. And then once you go check the facts, it's not right. And then that can make, crazy. that could be the difference between somebody making a good decision and making a bad decision, right? A hundred percent. I find it so bizarre. Like I just, I said to Zervain this morning, I'm like, I can't believe, uh, the bullshit that gets fed through mm -hmm. media and it's like controlled by media. And there's a big thing, um, you know, and I'm not making mention of it because it's just going to cause controversy, but Jordan Peterson is yeah. probably phenomenal. Like when I first started reading about him, I wasn't too keen on him. I was like, I, mm. I don't know. 
But as you start to, and it's always the people, we talked about this because I'm going through our videos and I'm like, oh, we did talk about it. <laughs> when you start to speak the truth, what ends up happening to you? People try to shut you down. And and that's exactly what's happening with him. I know he's, he's I think he's controversial because he's too direct in the topics Very that he direct. approaches. Very direct. You know when you and, meet people that are direct though? Yeah. And sometimes they irritate you? Yeah. Like, you know and, what I mean? You're like, I'm irritated. But it's sometimes the truth being spoken to you. Truth hurts. That's what people say, right? And and I think in his case, because he's very direct in his opinions, and and we have to admit, this man is a well of knowledge. It's, oh, it's amazing to listen to him. 100%. And I know that by saying this, there's going to be like oh, a it's going to be huge. People I only commenting. okay, but I do want to yeah, I do want to make mention of this. Uh, some of his items, like I do 100. percent I do believe. I'm like okay, yeah, this is, but. I was never a big fan of him. Like I wasn't, but I what, what made me a big, no, but what made me a big fan of him, and this is what I'm throwing this out there just so we're all clear about this. I wasn't a big fan of Jordan Peterson. You can talk to my my husband, never. Something about me, like, mm. but then the government got involved and they want to shut him down. So yeah. as soon as that happens, I'm like, wait a second, light. Let's look to see what's happening. Because usually where there's drawn, where people are trying to shut down people. They're trying people, to control. They're right? trying to control. And that's the thing, like, in the last little bit, and I'm I, I don't even want to stay on this topic because it will get ugly and like this, yeah. Listen, so we're all entitled to have an opinion. Not every and everybody's opinion is gonna be the same one. And we all <clears throat> excuse me. And we all have to respect each other's opinion. One hundred percent. That's that's the bottom. Yeah, line, but I, right? that that's what I'm saying. So with this whole Jordan Peterson, it was it was that. It was more when that I read, I saw a video on his daughter saying my dad's getting you know shut down. Somebody's and then I was like, wait a second. So then I went down a rabbit hole. I started to look at his videos, and I'm like, before like I wasn't putting attention to it. I was like, oh okay, whatever, right? Yeah. But now it's a different story. When things get shut down, I'm like, what was the message I wasn't supposed to hear? Now you got me. That's just like us as human nature. And this is surprising that not more Canadians or more anybody does this. When somebody tells me I can't do something. I'm like, wait a second, why can't I do it? I do it even more, right? Yeah, so but, you know how it goes. But where have you heard this topic in the regular, let's call it quote unquote regular media? They don't talk about it. No, not at all. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm just saying you, I don't have any formed opinion that I want to talk about here because it's just going to cause controversy. What I'm saying to people, the whole topic about this whole situation is when somebody tells you you can't do something or they try to shut something down, be more aware of it and cognitive of it. Be like, why are they shutting it down? I need to understand. And don't do, because this is what kills me. I heard this, oh, it's because he's talking nonsense. I'm sorry, the guy is well intelligent. So no, something's going on there. So just be aware. That's the only thing that I, I don't even know why we got on this topic. <laughs> I have no idea why, but I'm just saying, when I was, when I was watched, like, that's why I, and I didn't stay on social media to watch it because that's controlled too, right? So but when it comes to the media frenzy, to mortgages, everything is controlled. So I believe wholeheartedly media is not your best source to get information regarding your mortgage. So when mm -hmm. you hear rates are going up or this and that and blah, blah, I'm getting very passionate about this. Yeah. Talk to a professional who is in the industry who you trust to give you the right information. Honestly. This information is at your fingertips. Yeah. You all you need to know is direct yourself and usually 100% when you go back 90 years to today, history repeats itself. So watch the trends. That's what economists do. That's yeah. their job. They look at charts, they check to see. So I just do it for myself. I am a person that if you said to me, Carmen, this is the information, I go, "Thanks, Jamie." I grab it and I go research myself. I'm not saying you're wrong, Jamie. I'm yeah. not. However, I do want to check for myself. So if I'm going to one of my agents, I want to make sure and say, I check the information. It's not just coming from Jamie. This is the actual truth of where I reason. And you're right. It is reliable sources. Yeah. And it's common sense. I mean, at the end of the day, all of this stuff that we're talking about is common sense. And I think that people need to get a little bit more common sense in their life because you're right. Common you can't, sense. You, yeah. It's, <laughs> you can't just listen to one person and just say, okay, that's the truth. No. Use some common sense, people. Talk to other other individuals right. that are in the, in, that are professionals and, and try then to make a decision for yourself based on your own life and the the situation you're at when it comes to a mortgage it's a it's a huge it's 
probably one of the biggest investments yeah. you're going to make in your life. Make sure you talk to some people before you make a huge decision. But, you know, going back to the social media and the media in general, yeah, you know, try to find as many sources. But I'm going to put it out there as well that I think that more people like yourself should be putting more good information out. You said out. this already. And you know what? I'm telling you, 2023 because will be different. You're they're, right, they're Jamie. Gonna, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to watch this episode, us talking here. And they are very good at what they do. They're professionals and they understand what we're talking about. And they're going to be behind their phone or the computer listening to us and going, yeah, but you should also talk about this and this and this. Things that we're not even thinking about right now. And I, you know what? I always say, grab your phone and start recording because the more good information we put out, the more we, we can... Um, Eliminate kind of the el garbage. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like we need to kind of level things up right. because I feel like but here's the thing. a lot of Do the bad information. Do honest people come out and start just recording, right? Because here's the thing. When you told me. So. We, no, but how, how many years have, or like, let's be honest, Jamie. It was about maybe a year and a half ago. We were talking about prime rate. We were talking about all this. And I'm like, oh, Jamie, I'm telling you right now. Everybody that's come across my path, you know, I've said rates are going up like rate. I don't know why people assumed rates were just going to stay low and it wasn't sustainable where these values were going. I'm like, do people live in the short term fishbowl memory? Like, Oh, Oh, Oh yeah. Like there's still, you know, the future that you need to consider and think about. That's what the scary part is, is listen, I didn't even know how to navigate in a low rate market. I came into this industry in 2008 when we were in a great recession and I excelled. I excelled because I love helping people and people weren't so damn rude and yeah. like getting information from you because now it's like there's no loyalty, no loyalty. When it was a low rate market, I hated this profession because like I said to you, 15,000 agents came into the market thinking that's how easy my job was, right? Yeah. What was I always saying? How are 15,000 people coming into my industry as if they think they can just do this job like it's nothing? And now when your skills have to come out, we're going to see those 15,000 disappear because they do not know how to put a deal together. Something you said to me I that resonated. No, because we're really good friends. I thought we were good friends. But <laughs> something you said to me, and I want to make this a clear message. So this is going to be one of the clips. I want to make it a clear message. When you go and sit with somebody who has been in the industry for 20 plus years, okay, 20 plus years, you are paying for their experience. They've seen so many deals. They've been through a recession, a mini recession, a market correction. They've been through all this. So they know the solutions in the back of their pocket to put together for you, right? Mm -hmm. Think about this. So when people sit there and go, kills me, kills me today. To hear people say, excuse me, what's your best five-year fixed? I'm like, what the fuck? Can we try to qualify you? Do you even know what's going on in the market? Good luck trying to qualify, let alone, let alone what's the best five-year fixed. Think about it. I want you to think about this. So next time when you go to somebody, and this is what I do now. Hey, Jamie, you do social media? Absolutely. Okay, great. How long have you been in the industry? Since 2004. 2004. So what am I paying for, Jamie? my experience. Thank you. And that's exactly what everybody should be doing. My concern, my concern, oh dear God, my concern is <laughs> we're in this situation. It's only going to get worse. People need to know how to do their job. People need to know how to put solutions together. People need to know how to navigate through this. And those 15,000 agents or whoever came through or whoever has gotten their license who does not understand the mortgage industry, it is very crucial that you pick the right person. That's it. And it, and I hate saying this because, you know, I don't want to knock anybody down, but 15,000 people knocked my profession down a couple of years ago yeah. when they came into this industry thinking it was the simple thing to do because I can just smack a deal together and away we go. Away we go. We're good. I can't even, why did I do that dance? But I don't who know. cares? We All don't. I'm saying is people have to be a little bit more respectful for the history that you carry in that profession. They have to. Some things that I'm looking at now, I'll be completely honest. I have, I met a person this morning. Um, I was looking at, uh, not these people, like a lot of people are, you notice now I'm seeing clients before yeah. you even get here. So yeah. I excel. She's working. No, She's but, actually working. No, but this market here, and I'm not, I love helping people. 
I love using my brain to put a deal together. It's one of the best. This makes me so happy. So I'm always the positive. Yeah, if we're in a recession, I'm the person that you want to be in front of because A, I have empathy, compassion. I am a good person. So when I look at deals, I will not look at deals to be like, how much money can I make off this deal? I'm more like, I want to keep you in that home. How can I help you keep you in that home? Right. And I teach this, you know, this is what my agents go through. You know, you look at a deal as if they're your mom, dad, you know, brother, sister, that's what we're doing. I love this time, Jamie. I walked into 2008 was the year I started. I loved it. I was like, wow. And people were like, I can't believe you're getting into the market now. This is where I excel in. My thing to you is, let's be realistic. Um, I don't see a lot of people renewing their their mortgage license this year. I do not see that happening. I can't wait till those numbers come out. I love numbers. So I'm like, let's wait for those numbers because renewals are coming up now. Let's wait for those numbers to come through, right? Let's see where they're at. But I do want to make clear on one thing. This job isn't easy. It may have been easy for two years when rates were really low, two plus years. Um, it may have been easy. But because it's qualifying them, getting them to qualify. But reputation is huge. Mm. I know for a fact that when people see my name, that it holds value. Because I've never misled lenders. I've never looked at a deal and been like, how can I put this together to screw off a lender and blah, blah, blah. Is that like, your voice? No, no one, I don't. Is that, is that the voice you use? <laughs> no, but I'm just saying I never do that because... I work in the best interest of all parties involved in that transaction, right? That's just how it works. I, I follow the rules and I, I don't think I've ever broken a rule. Um, you know, I'm very trans. So if you ever meet me, you know, yeah. I'm very transparent, right? So I'm an open book and sometimes that works for me or it works against me. And I always say, if it works against me, you weren't meant to be around my, my aura, right? You're meant to be gone out of my circle. But in some instances, it works in my favor. And I believe now, more than ever, 2023 is the year that fakeness, being liars, uh, not being transparent, you're out. That trend is gone. The new trend for 2023, new trend is honesty, transparency, is you know all of that put together. And this is my year to excel because I stand for all of that. And for all the people that ever misled or we're, you know, we're not transparent, they're going to suffer through this year. Because 2022, like some of the things I've seen or heard in the last three, I'm like, holy crap. Like the fakeness is killing me, right? Like it kills me. But it's it's people that are honest, transparent, they're going to excel in this business. They're going to excel and you're going to see it. And it's going to be phenomenal, to be quite honest with you. Honestly. You got to be nice. Got to be nice. So... Uh, which brings me to, so we're, we're shutting down that mortgage topic. <laughs> this is a long podcast. <laughs> it's been going on forever. I know. But it's good stuff, people. It is. It's, good it's stuff. really good. And when you talk about mortgages, Jamie, we can be here for two hours, just so you're aware. And yeah. I know people actually, so here's something I wanted to tell you. Today, oh. um, I had somebody ask if I was on Spotify because they're driving mm. uh, long day and they wanted to hear me. And I'm like, I'm actually on Spotify. She's on Spotify. Yeah. So we're on Spotify. Um, and, and while we're on the social media thing, uh, you know, don't forget to comment. I, I, I don't see enough comments. I, watch, I wish I could see more comments uh, from you guys. You know, ask this lady some questions. She needs to get busy with questions. A hundred percent. You know, and this is the perfect way to, you know, if you, if something is in in your case in particular, if you have a question about whatever's going on in your life when it comes to your I mortgage, just want, I want to make, no, but there. Jamie, I want to make clear, I've gotten so many clients through these videos. So you're more than, well, you don't have to comment. You can DM me. And DM, I honestly, yeah, yeah. and then people have my number. Uh, yesterday alone, I got four people reaching out to me saying, yeah. can you help me with this situation? You don't have to deal with me. I love to give my opinion and give you the right direction where you should go. So honestly, people have been reaching out. Yeah. So I do want to say thank you for reaching out for everybody that has reached out. If you haven't reached out or you have an urge to ask something about mortgages, I promise you the information that's provided here, very transparent. Um, usually the information is from, you know, history where I'm, I'm getting my resources and sources. A lot of people are like, index chart. What's the index chart? The index chart is a greater reading on a lot of the history that happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you want, you know, you want to talk about that and I'm, I'm happy to talk about that as well. However, I want to move into the motivational side because, um, yeah. So I wanted to talk about, uh, what I've been doing for the last little bit. We haven't oh. talked about it for a while, so we haven't even had a talk uh, about this. So I think my journey started about six months ago, uh, 
so I, I'm going to butcher their name, CrossFit uh, Battlefield. Um, so it's CrossFit Battlefield. Z and Cody, I am so sorry if I'm butchering it, but we're going to put the logo right here. Okay. I've started my venture with them. Um, so I walked into their gym. I literally, I think we were on vacation in July or August. And yeah. I said to Zervain, you know what? One time in my life, Jamie, one time, I want to be super fit. So I'm like, I want to be super fit. But when we talk about being super fit, we don't really think like in our mind what that looks like, how it's graphed out, right? In your mind, you're like, I'm going to starve. I'm going to try to be on this deficit because all these things I'm seeing on social media is hilarious. It's it's funny. Oh, especially because in January. Deficit yes. calorie, deficit calorie, make sure you deficit. So anyways, I met, I called, so just like I called you, mm. I think it was a Saturday, I messaged and Z, um, Z, like my husband, isn't that funny? Z calls me back or messages me and he's like, hey, I uh, noticed you message. And I'm like, whoa, impressive. It was a Saturday. You did the same thing. So I was impressed. I was like, wow, okay. He's like, come in, see us, whatever. So I go in and I meet Z and um, Cody. Cody was very quiet. So first of all, I thought he was very, like, no no offense, Cody. I think you're so cool now. But (laughs) then, and usually when I'm standoffish about people, tells me that they're good people, right? So usually when you're, you you, like, you kind of have some tiffs with them, Mm. means you're going to be good friends, right? So um, I met Z and Cody. And he's like, Cody's going to be your trainer. I'm going to be your nutritional coach, uh, blah, 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 whatever. So I get on this macro diet thing and it works. Like it was honestly, so we'll talk about that down a little bit more, but I wanted to bring something up about this because yesterday, yesterday, so a couple of weeks ago, I, I'm doing this open Was with it CrossFit. yesterday or a couple no, of weeks? No, no, I know. I'm, I'm jumping I'm jumping everywhere because I wanted Carmen. to talk. I know, I know. <laughs> you yell at me about doing this, but this is me on a podcast. And Carmen's brain is fascinating. It goes at like 10 <laughs> million miles an hour. I know. No, I really want to talk about this because these guys are phenomenal. I'm telling you right now, just just the way they operate is smart. So I... Let's go back to the gym. I walked into the gym. They met with them. I started the program. I'm on this macros diet. I'm doing the, uh, like, I wasn't doing CrossFit. I was just training with Cody. Then I start watching the gym. The people are doing, have you ever seen CrossFit? So I was interested. I'm like, wow, this is an interesting workout. So I got into it. So you know how you say my brain operates and sometimes Mm -hmm. I talk faster than my thought process? A little bit. Okay. So CrossFit slows me right down. So when you're into the motion, you're in your head, but you're trying to get through these workouts. Um, and I'm learning about it. Um, so a couple of months ago, I said to, to Z, I said, I think I want to do CrossFit. Can you put me in the CrossFit program? So the first day I walk in with Cody and Cody's like, you know, he was kind of like, he was good. At first he was like, I don't know, with my age, right? And I'm like, what? But he was like, yes. he wasn't saying, because I had said, I said an unrealistic goal. And I love how he's so realistic. So, you know, awesome to Cody put me in my place and said, you know, let's start this way. Little steps, right? And we did. So a couple of weeks ago, that's why I'm getting to a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, I was doing a workout. It was right after my birthday and I, I failed it. First time I failed it. I was, so in his mind, he's like, you don't fail. Like he gets really annoyed with me. Sorry, Cody. But he does get really annoyed with me. So Cody says to me, he goes, you know what, Carm, you didn't fail. You made it to where you made it and you did very well. Right. To me, I failed. So I was so disappointed. I walked out of the gym. I was so disappointed. Aquarius. You know me, right? I have to win. So I get in the car and I'm upset. I didn't cry. I just want everybody to... <laughs> I do not cry. I didn't cry. I am tough. But I'm upset. And Cody's like, he's the silent coach that just sits there. And you don't know if he's disappointed. Like, I think he reminds me a little of my dad because he's very, like, quiet. So I don't know if he appreciates what I do or what... You know what I mean? But yesterday, I can't express... I'm getting emotional because he's so amazing. So... I'm I'm afraid to <laughs> I'm afraid of throwing up, right? Okay. <laughs> Did I tell you I have that phobia? So I got the phobia. And every time I got to that point in my workout, I was like, uh-uh, not doing it. I'd walk away. I'm like, not doing it. So yesterday, I was doing this really hard workout. Really hard, right? So 10 sets of ridiculousness. Cody, you're always ridiculous. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> but I blocked. So every time I got to that point, Jamie, and we're going to talk about fear. This is what it is. I got to that point. I'd stop. I'm like, nope, not happening. Yesterday, he's like, I was at rep like set seven. And he's like, no, you need to do it. And he's like, then he turns into this different person. He's like, let's do it. You got it. So you know how Aquariuses are? They're like, oh yeah, I got it. All of a sudden the energy came back, right? Mm-hmm. Because I am a positive person, right? I know I'm a positive person, but when somebody just sits there silently, I'm not. So he started like 
you can do those last three sets. And the last three sets are the worst. I just want, if anybody Always. does it, I, I want it to die. Anyways, when I finished it, I finished it. But in my head, guys, at seven, I was like, I'm done. I'm going to tell them, forget it. I ain't doing this. What do I have to do this for? But I don't think anybody understands the gratification you get. So I was in the car and I was explaining to, I called, Zervain always calls right after 210 just to find just to out. Just to make sure you're alive. All the time. You're alive. Yeah, he thinks Cody's the bomb. So anyways, he's like, so how did you do? I'm like, and then I just, I was crying on the way home. I was like, Zervain, I did it. <laughs> like I did, he made me, so, but I did it. What I'm saying to you is I would have just threw up. I was okay to do it. I was like, he's right. I'm going to do it. So we talked about a video on fear base where we stop ourselves in fear, right? Because of fear, we're like, oh, we're scared. I don't want to do it. Forget it. So these guys push you to that limit where they're like, no, you can do it. You can do it. But you don't have to do it the way everybody else does it. You do it within your parameters and what you feel accomplished with. Yeah, you got to listen to your body too. Exactly. And I think, you know, um, I think it's just amazing how they both operate. But Cody is my direct coach. And I have to say Cody is probably the best individual. So you've been at this for since uh, the Six, summer? July. Oh, so wow, it'd be July. Good. And honestly, it's 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 more intense now. So a lot more of course, intense. Yeah. Um, but he makes me do like weights where in my mind, he says what stops me. So I'm going to expose myself because I'm like, I'm going to expose myself. Not in that. I'm going to expose myself because... You know how I'm always like, you can do it. Everybody can do it. Let's do it. I'm this person. When the weight's really heavy and I have to like power clean it. So we'll show a power clean because I'm still learning this. This is a power clean. So when you're doing a power clean, it's he's like, you can do more weight. I'm like, no, I can't. And then I st- I literally stop midway because I s- it's me in my head. And he's like, it's yeah. you. It's in your head. He's like, I watch your videos. He's like, you. And I'm like, I know, but I struggle with that, right? Like as soon as, so that's fear-based, Jamie. That's yeah, what I'm telling is. you. So when we reside in that frequency, you're not able to do it. So I'm going to try to change it up in the gym when I'm doing that with him where I'm going to start doing different self-talk where it's like, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. So I that's just awesome, think, man. yeah, but I think, you know, and CrossFit I'm, is a is a tough, tough workout. I'm it, not even kidding is. you. Uh, you know, I, I brought it to the team like, hey guys, you guys want nobody. Like, we're not but I'm glad you're talking about it and you're you're going through your experience through it. And it's been six months uh, because what I hate to see is when people are there for like three weeks and they're like, oh, uh, no, you got to be there for a while. But I'm glad that you're saying this, that it's tough, but it's great. And now you're feeling much better doing it because honestly, well, I think... I believe we're living in a, in a phase of society that uh, people are, if it's too hard, I'm not going to do it. And, you know, you're only going to, you're only going to make your life harder afterwards, you know? Yeah. And age, I know you touched a little bit about, I can't do it because I'm getting too old. Um, no, no, but- I can do it. I totally believe I can. Mm, I can. <laughs> Just try it. You're the old person. I'm the old no, guy. <laughs> uh, but you're never too old. That's the other thing I wanted to get to. A lot of people, you know, I'm, I'm, just going to be 46 uh, soon. And, you know, I have a lot of friends that when we're talking about this stuff, they're like, oh, man, when I was 20, I used to do it. But now it's it's a different, you know how it is. Yeah, you know but how Jamie, you know what? No, I'll tell you, you not for push. nothing. You got to push. Yeah, but I'll tell you not for nothing. Cody pushes me to, like, he's like, yeah, you can do it. And, he, and he's like, please, you can do it. And I'm like, yeah, I can do it, right? Yeah. Like, he really makes me believe I can do it. But sometimes I'm like, this guy's nuts. Like, I think he has too much faith in me. But the thing is, is your coach needs to be that way. And I realize that because I do a lot of self negative talk when I'm there because you watch people, but these people have been at it for like 10 years, it's like, like 10 years. Exactly what I was going to say. You can't compare yourself to other people no, that are at right. the gym because right. you don't know how long those people have been doing right. those exercises. Right. And the other thing is you do have to realize, yeah, if you are a little bit older, it's you're gonna. It's gonna take a lot longer to recuperate. You're right. It's gonna take a lot longer to get into that shape. You're right. But it it's not impossible. Yeah, listen, it's coming from a guy that started martial arts when he was forty. So that's amazing. You know what I mean? No, I know, and that's why I'm saying like I wanted to bring them up. Um, you know, Battlefield is Good is for honestly you. on. And yeah, they're honestly Battlefield is you have amazing. Have to go there one of these days. Yeah, no, and and listen, I do a it, video there. No, but that's what I was saying. I was like telling them, I'm like, I would like the team to do it. I'm going to bring it to the team again. But that's, Battlefield that's... Has, has helped me overcome a lot of my fears. Um, and I don't even think they know. I think they just go with the flow of how they run their shop. And yeah. I'm honestly like, you know, there may be a ton of CrossFit gyms out there. I don't even know. I didn't even know yeah, I was entering a, lot, a cross. But... Like there may be a lot. But Battlefield, when you talk about empathy, when you talk about feelings, when you talk about, um, you know, the caring, they have that, right? And, you know, um, I always say, like, um, 
Cody is just phenomenal. Like yesterday, like I said, you can ask Serene. I I was lost for words because in my mind, I had already exit strategy. I was like, <laughs> set seven, I'm done. But he I'm pushed out. me. So when I finished it, I just had no words even for him. Like I was like walking up and down because I thought I was going to die. That's the first thing because you're dying. But when I left the gym, walked out and I sat down, I'm like, oh my God, I, I accomplished it. So it's not like you're accomplishing it for nothing. You're accomplishing it for yourself, right? So, um, you know, and even himself, like, you know, Cody, the way, you know, he does, like when he's doing the moves, I'm like, this guy's phenomenal. Like he's just been doing it for so long. But I would just say if you're looking and you're interested in, you know, um, joining something that's challenging for you. I don't know about you being a professional. I am very high strung. Like, like you say, you, you pointed out and I know my podcasts are very sporadic sometimes when I'm, you know, overthinking or whatever, but that's just how we operate. I know I'm yeah. a different person when I'm talking, but I always get a lot of commentary back that, you know, love the realness, love this, love that. And, you know, I like seeing that. I don't want to change what this podcast is about, but if you're high strung, you're a professional, you want something challenging, Battlefield is the place for you, right? So I would, you know, we're going to put up their contact info. Uh, I'd like to put up, you know, I, I'd like to put a video up of Cody actually doing some of the moves because it's phenomenal, right? So I think he's awesome at what he does. Uh, Z is amazing, um, amazing salesperson, uh, amazing, you know, coach, nutritional coach. Um, yeah, so I'd like to put that contact uh, information up, put in the plugin for them because cool. it's worked for me. Um, but everything else, like the summary on the mortgages, um, uh, motivation, you can always reach out to me. Um, you know, sometimes it is hard when it's your personal situation to comment. I totally understand that. So, you know, I would highly suggest you DM me yeah. or if you have my number, text me as well. That's key and important. Um, I'm very fast to respond now. I've realized Jamie that like how many clients I'm getting through social media is phenomenal. So I'd like to see that happen more um, cool. as well, just to assist them as well. And I love the questions. Ask me anything you want to ask me. Um, you know, we're on Spotify, uh, YouTube. Um, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. But I, I love that somebody TikTok asked me. Well. Yeah, TikTok, uh, you know, just, you know, follow us. Like it's key and important because when you do follow on YouTube, yeah. it, it shows you when I drop a video, um, you know, so I think it's key and important that, you know, you just keep, you know, keep plugged. And especially on YouTube, you're not going to get bugged by, you know, all of these uh, alerts and notifications sure. and all of that. You know, you're just going to be alerted whenever a, a video comes up. So For it's sure. not like it's going to bug you, but it's going to keep you informed, right? For so, sure. And it's just hit it. It's just, a, it's a click away. People. Oh, my kids are all over that, right? My kid has a channel now. I'm not dropping his channel, but he's got a channel. He's so hilarious, man. And I love I'm going to be honest with you. It. He's got over like 1,000, 2,000 views on his video. I'm like, what is he doing that I'm not doing, Jimmy? Because kids support them each other, you know? It's, it's oh, so, yeah, 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 that's right. Kids, and he said that too. Yeah. He was and then he showed me his demographic. I'm like, how does he know? He's like, these are the people that are viewing me in this country. to the back end. Oh, oh my, my God. gosh, my kid's You're so You're sounding smart. so old right I know. Now. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> everybody else, you know what? I do want to, you know, shout out to my team. Uh, my team's amazing. They're great people. Uh, if you need to reach out to any agents, um, you know, just, just reach out to them. Um, you know everybody else like jamie thank you so much for the videos that you put together the content you put together people comment all the time of how professional it looks i feel like a rock star every time people look at it and comment on it yeah so Make you know you, you like do awesome yeah you, you're awesome at what you do and you know everybody else thank you so much for supporting the channel it's key and important if you haven't subscribed like jamie said just hit the button and subscribe to everybody else thank you so much uh it was a pleasure how is it in the mortgage market mm, we're all suffering no, i'm just kidding oh. <laughs> it's burning yeah. everybody crash else. and burn <laughs> we're gone no parachute no problem <laughs> what is going on? we're doing your pot uh, why am i speaking <laughs> <laughs> it's not connected this yeah. is not connected not at all not at all we're doing uh, market updates. Are we in a recession? That's what you want to know. <laughs> this is Real Talk with Carmen Consler. My sidekick's back. You know what? So annoying. <clears throat> See what I mean? <clears throat> though? You do it on purpose, though. You want to be a But what am I supposed to do with it? Be normal. Be normal. Uh, all right. It's just because my hair looks weird. Like, like some.
amazing. She's such a bird, I swear. Join Connor Connor where the big boys play.